Last week, if you were watching the Super Bowl, you may have been thinking one of the two things that I was thinking. One was disappointment that the Baltimore Orioles didn't make it in again this year. But the second is that there were a lot, and I mean a lot, of advertisements for cryptocurrency. Over the last year, I've kind of been biting my tongue on the crypto boom that a lot of people in and out of the tech industry have been voicing support for and fervently defending as certain news stories have dominated the headlines. Cryptocurrency is also one of those very interesting topics in the world of technology because if you know anything about it, you either avoid it like the pandemic or you will fight to the death to defend it. I don't want this video to be either, but I have points to be made on both sides. So, after a year of being off the scene, I figured the first tech video of mine in 2022 could be to sit down, show you the facts, and simply explain why cryptocurrency still has a lot of serious problems. I'm Connor Mitchell, and it's time for me to piss off a lot of people online. Let's get into it. Before we get into what is wrong with cryptocurrency, we need to understand the foundation of what it was all built on, and that is a technology called blockchain. Back in 1991, blockchains were a way of digitally timestamping files online. This allows for security against messing with certain files through tampering. In 2009, this technology was adapted into the cryptocurrency Bitcoin. There are about a million different videos out there using very technical terminology to explain this, but here's what I came up with. Each block, which could be any kind of digital file you want, talks to each other block in what we call a blockchain. But not only do these blocks have specific data on what they are, but also what the other blocks around them are as well. Granted, not every block, but just the ones around it. Remember that game Telephone we all used to play as kids? It's the one where a kid would whisper something to you, and then you would whisper it to the next person? It's kind of like that, but with these blocks. They know what each of them is, and who their neighbors are. And if a file is changed or hacked, that change needs to be reflected on the next block. If it isn't legit, then the blocks don't match and the chain is broken. This whole process makes copying digital files much more difficult. But in the age of higher performance computers and more sophisticated hacking techniques, not impossible. Now, granted, it's not all perfect. Some of the problems that most people may not think about at first are cause for somewhat or even serious concern. The first problem is little to no regulation. We have been seeing tons of news stories lately about different sites and trading platforms that have been hacked and large amounts of cryptocurrency are being stolen. And by large amounts, I mean the GDP of a small country. And if you lose this money online, it's not backed up. Meanwhile, at any bank in the United States, there's something called FDIC. This ensures money up to $250,000 should anything happen. And I mean anything, from a bank robbery to an economic collapse to a meteor falling out of the sky and crashing right on your safety deposit box. It's the same reason you don't keep all your money in your PayPal account. The next problem is that because it's entirely based online, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are inherently much less secure. Once you put something online, it's not secure anymore. It goes back to what we were told growing up with the internet for almost all our lives. Anything you share online can, at some point, be accessed by everyone. And if you think that's ridiculous, ask several dozen celebrities who will never look at Apple's iCloud service the same way again in terms of security. Finally, energy consumption. Using tremendous amounts of energy for mining bitcoins, which is essentially computers running calculations to produce and obtain more bitcoins, does not go unnoticed. Even though the argument is that Bitcoin uses renewable energy, a recent study shows that only 39% of Bitcoin mining relies on renewables. 61% is still based on fossil fuels. But beyond all of that, the biggest problem with Bitcoin, at least right now, is volatility. I don't know if tomorrow the price of Bitcoin will go up or down, or whether it will be worth a million dollars or bottom out to nothing. But I do know, and anyone who supports Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies won't argue this either, that the price of Bitcoin today will not be the price of Bitcoin tomorrow. And that's the greatest failure of Bitcoin. The only reason people buy it is that it's supposedly going to appreciate. And the only reason it would appreciate is that someone else wants to buy it for a higher price because they think they can sell it for an even higher price than that. If Bitcoin were nothing more than a stock, that wouldn't be a problem. 
But if I went to Subway today and ordered a sandwich for $10, and then I go tomorrow, order that same sandwich at the same location, and the price is either way up or way down, that's a problem either way. Suddenly, the goods that I'm buying, whose values don't change nearly as much, are then hooked into how much this cryptocurrency is valuing itself. Overall, the biggest problem with cryptocurrency is that it's being treated more like a stock rather than a currency. Even though people accept it as a payment, there's no set price that will allow that cryptocurrency to stay the same price for any given amount of time. Right now, spending bitcoins on goods and services is like buying your groceries using stocks from your 401k. Decentralization is great for experimenting to see what kinds of innovation can come around for Web3 technologies, but it is terrible in the long term when considering security. For the time being, I wouldn't invest in cryptocurrency with the mindset that it's the final form of what will be replacing the dollars in our wallets or even our bank accounts. I wouldn't even invest in it with the hopes of getting rich. At this point, crypto is no more viable as a full-blown currency than Beanie Babies were in the 90s. And no, taking a picture of a Beanie Baby and adding it to a blockchain isn't a much better option. But that's a completely separate video. Boy, it's good to be back.